Uh, we got a guy over here that's going to pinstripe my friend Pete's car, my little uh, 67 bug. But before we do that, uh, we want to do a walk around to his car. He's got a, what year's your car holding? 74. He's got a 1974 Carmen Ghia, and he's got some extreme shit going on here. A lot of work that he did himself, and I want to go over that before we go out and start pinstriping. What's up, bud? Shake your head, make a friend. What's up, my Now, I met you over at the car show, dude. Yeah, Dub Splash. And I got all this uh, car footage that uh, I still haven't made videos of. But uh, when I met you, I found out you were a pinstriper. Yeah, a little bit. Okay. So we uh, went over and looked at your car, and I said, damn, this is actually kind of a unique looking car. So it kind of grabbed my eye because you've done a lot of this work, and didn't you say you did all the work yourself? Yeah, all of it. Okay, show us what you've been doing to it, buddy. Well, I mean, I've had this car over the last like six years, so uh -huh. I've done a lot of stuff and like double back and uh, you double back. What do you mean? Like, I, you know, I used to like run adapters and stuff like that and kind of like flare my fenders and do stuff oh, just okay, to get by, okay. you know, and then like later on, you know, I learned and got better and better and eventually like, you know, just built. So you basically things. taught yourself how to do everything, including pinstriping. Yeah. Yeah. All right, you got a narrowed front end there, bud. What is that? Four, five, six? What? That's that's only three inches. That's, that's a three inch narrow. It's, yeah, it's all you really need. Now, did it. you do that yourself, or? No, I, I did not. That that particular beam is a is a double bag beam. Double back. What does that mean? It's double bag. It's got two airbags. Oh, this has air ride suspension. Yeah. Okay, can you show that to us how it works, or? Yeah. Because it's very uh, it's very odd to see a, a Volkswagen with uh, air ride. Son of a bitch, dude. There you go. We have a tank and compressors in the back. That's badass, dude. Now, can you ride the car like that, or is that too low? Yeah, you can. Uh huh. You just gotta watch out. What else have you done, Holden? Um, well, I cut the hole in the top. Put the uh -huh. rag top in. You put the rag top in there yourself? Yeah. Did that like three years ago. Now is this an original rag top sunroof out of a Volkswagen or is this some aftermarket no, kit that you buy? It's a universal kit. I'd see like Gia's with a like little pop-up uh -huh. window and I was like, man, it would be cool to have a rag top Gia. Damn, so, that's badass. So it looks like did you buy this used or new or what? No, it's it's been it's three years old now. Oh, okay. I mean, so, so you did buy that new. Yeah. It's, okay, so it's made for the Carmen Gia. Yeah, it's a universal one. Did it just know. fit on anything, or? Yeah, they, they make ones different sizes. I mean, uh -huh. you know, I'm gonna get time for a new one here soon enough. Or, okay, know, what else better. have you done, Holden? Because um, when you pulled up here, I thought this was like a 62, 63, dude. How did you uh, compensate on those front bumpers and rear bumpers, bud? What yeah, happened so, there? So, so the front bumpers, I flipped the brackets around. Okay. And, and drilled holes and basically modified the early bumpers to fit and get swan neck mirrors that are supposed to go like right up here, but you can't see out of them. So to, to mimic the, the bug mirrors, I put them, push them way up. Right yeah, yeah, I like that, to, dude. That's badass. You know, try to look early uh -huh, and classy. Uh -huh. What's going on with that exhaust over here, dude? Is that your own custom design or what? Yeah, I wanted to have side pipes, uh -huh. you know, and make the car look even lower to the ground. Kind of like a lowrider, old school. Oh, yeah. Exactly. That's badass, some, dude. Those are some uh, motorcycle tips uh -huh. I get from Summit and welded hangers up on there. Wow. So it's got little rubbers. And you did all that yourself. That's not a system you buy. You, you went ahead and welded all that and yeah, made screwed it, it together and glued it. And and I, I heard you pull up, it actually sounds pretty damn good. What are you running, a 1776 or what? Uh, that's just a 1600 with uh -huh. rocker arms and a 100 cam. Just a 1600. You, yeah. So you believe that stock is the best, huh? If you want to drive your shit, yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, dude. You know, a lot of these guys, they get the 1835s and the 2197s and the, you know, the 4687s and all this other shit. And to me, if you want to drive your car, the best thing is go 
factory original just like Volkswagen made them. Yeah. Are you running 041 heads or are you just running stock heads? Yeah, stock heads, yeah. And you don't ever have a problem drive down, you can go anywhere else. I'll bet you yeah. can go to California, am I right? Yeah, I could. Need to. Uh-huh. Anything else holding besides that fancy pinstripe in there? Now, did you pinstripe this? Yeah. Oh, you yeah. pinstriped that? Yes, sir. How long ago did you do that, buddy? Man, I did that about a year ago. That's badass. And I noticed that you got all this hidden pinstriping all over your car. I was... Okay, did you put the rat rod life on there? Yeah, th that was kind of a, a prior state of mind. Uh -huh. Is uh, you know, I did I did extreme things like yank on this right. before when when my fitment wasn't like it is now. And uh, you know, I was like, it's just a part of the car. It's just like, and now I've kind of gotten away from the rat rod and more towards custom you know, stock, custom, traditional low rider y uh -huh. type feel. And uh, you know, but I still keep it on there because it's just like it is kind of a rat rod, and it's it kind of gives you the feeling that that's when it was, and this is how it is now type shit. Yeah. Right. Yep. Like I like this pit stripe in here. That's pretty fancy. You did that. Yeah. Now let me ask you another question here, bud. Why uh, the green floor pans inside your car? Is that the going thing on these things, or what? There's this. Uh, is, that, is that like the hot thing to paint your the, floor pants? The, there's this off green everywhere through the car. Uh -huh. All of these cars got painted green in the 70s. Oh, okay. This was a green and, one. And 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 to just pay homage to that, you know, I, you know, I, I really want want to exaggerate the red and eventually and buff, buff it out more and have little bits of green coming uh -huh. through to be that third accent color, that pop that kind of almost clashes, you know, enough right. to stand out and just be funky. That green actually goes pretty know. good with the red. Now let me ask you this, I noticed your car's kind of shiny, but the paint's peeling off. What's up with that, Holden? Uh, well, it's... it's Is that like the end out. thing to buff your uh, old paint or what? Well, uh, a lot of people tell me, oh, you should just clear it, you should just clear it, but I'm just not happy with where it's at. I'm always... Tinker you know, toying with you, always yeah. messing with your car. Yeah, or wrecking into stuff, you know, uh -huh. either or, and it just keeps it drivable, and uh, it's all covered in pollen right now. But covered in what? Pollen. Oh, uh, yeah. you mean from the the trees? The yeah, springtime. Springtime baby. pollen, yeah. there you go. So but, is this your daily driver, or? I can drive it I have a Mark II GTI that I, that I drive this and that, or uh -huh. my, my main car. Is that a Volkswagen you're talking about? Yes, sir. GTI? So you're a Volkswagen man from hell, huh? Yeah. I like the pinstriping in that dash there. Did you do that, Holden? Oh, yeah. Now, that's, that's cool some fancy pinstripe in there, dude. That would be uh, considered rat rod stuff going on there, bud. All right, man. Well, let's get in there and do some pinstriping, Holden. You're going to show us a few All tricks right. today. You're the teacher, not me. I'm just the camera guy. All right? All right. All right, dude. Oh, that's right. We were going to go get something to eat first, weren't we? Yeah. yeah. All right. So well, come on. Let's All go. right, let's go, dude. Let me lock my shop. All right, let's get down the road with Holden as we go get something to eat in his little rat rod Carmen Ghia. And I hope he doesn't wreck with my friend Pete in the car. Uh, this is a little bit littler than my Volkswagen bug, dude. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Okay, there we go. All right, bring that over here. Let's get the hell out of here, dude. Actually, when you get in the car, it's actually a pretty comfortable ride the way he's got the seat top set up in here. All right, so here we go. Uh, we're in Holden's 1974? Yeah. 70? 60-ish. Okay, 60 style, 1974-60 style Carmen Ghia. And uh, with the air ride suspension and the badass pinstriping going on, really looks nice here. Let's see how this thing runs down the road with a 1600. Empty steering wheel, that's pretty rare, dude. In my first car. Where'd you find that, Holden? It's in a Baja bug. Okay, um, we just got done looking at Holden's car. We're going to go out there and get a real quick walk around of it before we get into what he's doing on my bug. Uh, once again, this is a 74 bug. He's transformed it 
Uh, he's done all the work to it. It's a beautiful car, believe it or not. And it rides like a dream. I thought it was going to ride like a rock, having that air ride suspension on it. But it really, really rides smooth. And he did an awesome job building this car. So let's get back inside and see what's going on with his pinstriping. So here we are looking at my car, uh, good old Buford. And as we walk around, we see that uh, Holden is busy at it, pinstriping Buford. So let's see what he has to say and what's going on. What's up, Holden? Not a whole lot. So what do we got going here? What are we calling this? We're calling it lines, I guess. Yeah. Now that looks pretty, what do they call it, symmetrical? Where one side looks just like the other? Yeah. That's pretty good, buddy. Thanks. Uh -huh. So are you going to do that on each t headlight or what's up? Yeah, All something right. like it. Uh huh. That's the plan. Okay. Now are we going to be using two colors on that? or? Oh yeah. All right. Yeah. Now you taught yourself how to do this, am I correct? Yeah, mostly. Hold it. What kind of paint are you using, bud? I'm using one shot. Okay, we're using one shot paint and you're mixing that with uh, mineral spirits, I guess? Correct. And then you're using the magazine to load your brush with, is that what they call that? Yeah. Uh -huh. And what, what kind of brush are we using? Uh, I'm using a uh, Mac King 13 5 okay, aught. Mac King 13 5 aught. So that's a pretty, pretty good brush to flow out with and do whatever designs you need to do or what? Yeah, it's alright. I mean, if you know what you're doing, you could probably make any brush work. Uh -huh. but, uh, now what's the trick in pinstriping uh, to you? Because everybody has a different story. What's your... Con consistency. Paint consistency. Mm -hmm. Now when you're saying paint consistency, are you talking about... Uh, keeping your brush loaded or correct like not it not being too thin or too thick or uh -huh. lumpy or stuff in there and uh, right you just you want it to lay down just right for a long time all right you want to be you know you want to be able to just flow with it because um, you can pull a line you don't really have to have a steady hand you just have to have a steady movement right and getting just the right level of well, what about holding the brush is there a is there a Certain way that you're holding your brush versus like other pinstripers out there, and yeah. I, what are you left-handed? Yeah, so that so automatically I'm holding it wrong. Now, are you doing a lot of cars holding, or are you just like doing, you know, your buddy's cars, or what's up? You trying to go? You gonna eventually make a living out of this? Nah, I just kind of do it for fun. Yeah, do it for my own uh -huh. personal enjoyment. Right now, do you take your paints with you when you go to car shows? And nah, you don't even take them with you when you go to the show. No, nah, really, it, I oh. did it. One to, one to have pinstriping on my car and couldn't afford it, so. Right. Just make so that you're one of these guys that says, "Man, I can't afford that. I'm going to learn how to do it myself." Yeah. Now, do you believe in that doing it yourself situation or paying other people to do it for you? Well, that's a lot of times my only option. Mm hmm You know, and uh, I don't really trust people, so. Now, were you kind of an artist before you did this? I mean, are you pretty good at drawing or what? I'm really not. I'm okay, you uh -huh. know, but I'm not. I'm not spectacular. But you got an artistic mind, right? But, but yeah, if you I can set visualize my, stuff. If I set my mind, yeah. I mean, like this pinstripe, and I have no idea what I'm doing. It's just, I'm just going with the flow. Right. Whatever makes it feel good for that moment, right? Or look good, I mean. Yes. I'm trying to challenge myself also. Now, what do you mean by that? What are you well, talking like, about? Well, like, you know, I had a design on here before, which is a lot like something else I already did. Right. And I could see it going down that same path. And it looked okay, but I, I want to keep pushing the envelope and keep getting better and, uh, you know. Mm -hmm. As long as you have people like me that let you just go ahead and do what you think looks good. Yeah. Now, is that hard to get out there and pinstripe other people's cars besides your own? Yeah. Because you're afraid they might bitch and complain <laughs> about it? or. Yeah, and there's a certain level of professionalism you need to uphold calling yourself a... Uh, a pro? A pro, correct. Yeah. Which I do not claim to be. What do you call yourself, an amateur? A novice, correct. And why do you think you call yourself that? Because uh, you don't get, you don't really charge for it or something? No, or? it just... Uh, I mean, I don't understand. I haven't paid my dues, Okay. so to speak. I see what you're saying. It takes many years to, uh, mm -hmm. to call yourself a pro and to hone your skills. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of skill sets I, I have yet to learn. Um, that actually looks pretty cool, dude. Thanks, man. I actually like that. 
Just wait. Because like you said, now let's go back to this here. Uh, most people, they would look at that kind of like I did. What did I tell you I wanted? I wanted you to kind of go half moon around and then come back up on it. Yeah. Because that would be the most common thing that you would do on something like that, am I right? I mean, it's art. So you were talking about opening the envelope and saying, well, you know, that's what everybody else will do. What can I do to broaden, broaden my horizons and come up with some other design? Because that would be different. Am I right or wrong? Correct. You like pulling lines with holding? I enjoy making things and, oh. yeah, ha having a tangible result yeah. for my time. So what would you tell anybody out there that is thinking about pinstriping? Because you said you've only been in it for, what, uh, three years or so, four years? Yeah, and I really don't do it that often. Yeah. So what would you tell anybody out there that wants to learn how to pinstripe? Because you're not a professional and you don't put off like you're one either. Uh, don't, don't think you have to have a steady hand or you, you, know, you have to know someone that does it. I mean, there's, there's all a world kind of information. A lot of people, the biggest thing is that they just, oh, it's too hard. So, so and so said it. They have to have a steady hand. So, it's just not for me. I'm right. Out, you know. And or sometimes you see these videos, and there's, you know, they're throwing them lines down faster than you can blink your eye, and it, and, it, and they intimidate you. Is that what you're saying? It all comes down to how bad you want it, you know, and yeah. uh, and what you're willing to work for it, you know. Yeah. I mean, some people will have talent. And some people work for it, you know. And uh, if you put enough time and energy, you can become good at anything. That's true. You know, practice makes perfect, exactly. right? Exactly. And, and and I and I consider myself still practicing. Uh huh. Well, I think it looks pretty badass, dude. Thanks. All right. It looks like Holden's got it going. Um, he went ahead and did the two two color scallop job on it, two color stripe job. And I think the red and the white really goes good with the black rat rod car. Uh, he went ahead and did my dash. Looks really nice. Went ahead and got the, uh, the door posts looking good. I like that. And then he went ahead and got some pinstriping on the back here and it really came out good. That took him about three hours, three and a half hours to do all that. Let's get with Holden. See what he thinks. What's up, buddy? Well, cleaning up. What do you think? Think it came out nice? Yeah, I think it came out all right. Yeah, yeah. Did, did what I came here to do. All right. So what are we using here, dude? What what color is this? Uh, this is ivory. This ivory. That's called ivory. Yep, like bone color. Right. Okay. And that goes really good with that red. Am I right? Oh yeah. Uh huh. Like hey, peanut butter and jelly. Like peanut butter and jelly. There you go, dude. So what do you think about pinstriping this car? What do you? What's your reaction to it? Did you do a good job? Did you put too much? Maybe not enough. What? Uh. I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with it. I like how the, the, the fenders came out uh -huh. and uh, the dash. Now you were saying that uh, you kind of have your own technique and you kind of do the same, but you decided to go a little different on this and try something new. Isn't that what you were saying? Yeah. Because you got to keep up on, uh, you got to keep up on your design patterns yeah. and not stick with the same thing all the time. Am I right? You got to keep ch challenging yourself. Uh huh. Was this a challenge on this car? Yeah, yeah. Everything's different. Everything's its own unique challenge. You know, trying to break outside the box. You right. know, and uh, you know, not be exactly like you were last time. You know, try, try to be a little more edgy, not so swirly. Make it more rat rod. As so the rat rod, rod pinstripe and has more sharp edges to it. Is that what you're saying? That that's that would be my opinion of uh -huh. it. You know, and, and I feel like I did that, but still like kept long tapered. Long, tapered corners and not right you know hard right angles so if you were like doing a hundred thousand dollar show car you put more of that elegant uh the roundest you know it, it just type. it just depends i mean that that scrolling thing, type yeah me, me personally striping. that's more appealing to the eye that's what yeah. i what i like the scroll stuff yeah yeah that's pretty hard to do ain't it holden yeah have you tried it i have yeah it's not as easy that push and pull isn't easy is it dude no it's not so what do you got to say to people out there that want to start doing pinstriping? Because you've been doing it for, what, three years? Yeah. Yeah. What do you got to say to people that want to do pinstriping? What's the best advice you could give them, bud? Just do it. Yeah. Go buy go buy you a brush and some one-shot. Now, where do they get that brush and one-shot? You, you can get it at local art stores. Uh -huh. um, you don't have to order a fancy kit. What if kit? there's not an art store in that small town? Where are they going to go? Go to a, a, a paint store. Paint and body you know, shop yeah, supply. Paint, 
Yeah, ask, ask around for some one shot. You now, know? can you order that stuff online if you had to? You sure can. Yeah. Yep. What kind of brushes would you uh, would you tell people to order if they were just starting out? What kind of brush? Is that a Mac? Yeah. Uh, this this actually is a zero x six caliber. I use the uh, the Henson. Is the Mac brush a good brush to start out with? Mac. Oh yeah, most definitely. That's the most common brush on the market, isn't it? Yeah, I think that's what all the girls use for their makeup too. Is it the Mac brush? <laughs> no, but yeah. The Mac Daddy. They, they make they make pretty awesome brushes. These are pretty popular right is now. That a Mac? Yeah, this is a Hanson King 13. Okay. It's a five aught. Okay. Uh huh. And so uh, a five aught is like the standard issue. Well, I mean there is no standard. I mean you. It's just I, whatever you feel I, comfortable I think, with. I think they used to. This is just a zero, which is a smaller brush, but this is a five zero. Which is smaller. Which is number wise, it's smaller, but it's actually got more more to it. More I think. Bristles. I think it's actually got less bristles. It's just they're longer. Uh -huh. um, but I, I'm no expert. Now what you on got this. in your other hand there? What's that? This brush? is this an, is an Excalibur. Uh -huh. Or I'm sorry, this is a Vortex. And, Vortex. And you would use this for that scrolling technique. Yeah. Uh, small little designs and brushes uh, get expensive, don't they? Yeah, but I mean, I mean it, it, it. Some of them brushes can. I mean, they get up to like fifteen, twenty dollars a piece. Yeah, but if you get them exotic name brushes. Yeah, but relatively speaking, that's not that much money, yeah. cons considering you know you may use it a hundred, you know, a ton of times. Right. You know, same thing with the paint. Now, do you keep a lot of people keep their brushes in oil? Have you ever heard that? Yeah, I do that too. Do you keep them in oil when yeah. you're. Yeah, I have storing? more brushes than I really use. Now, is this a special like uh, pinstripe brush kit? box you can buy yeah or? yeah this is just a, a, a bo you know a, to hold your brushes uh -huh. you're, you're supposed to keep them suspended and and, oh, okay. and lubricated so they so don't what kind of oil are you using on those 40 weight 30 weight whatever oh, just regular old motor oil regular old motor uh -huh. oil so that's the best way to keep them in good condition just keep some motor oil on them and go down yeah the road. you want you want to you want to keep get all the paint out of the ferrule right, and get it dry sure. now you're how are you cleaning those with mineral spirits or? with mineral spirits and do the old bob ross slap your brush around there you go bob and, ross <laughs> yeah yeah and you you want to dry and clean and that's how you want to start pinstriping or uh or put oil in it um uh-huh and uh, i'm not always the best at cleaning all the oil out oh well but uh you know gives that, you a better drag right well, well yeah yeah get yeah you don't want any oil when you pinstripe so it's important that you you know clean that off right, and then dump right. all that old old mess out of there but, uh, now I noticed you're using a magazine here. What's going on with that? What's the magazine for? Oh, uh, that's basically my palette there, and that's where I keep loading the brush. And uh, is that the most common thing for pinstripers to do? Is to take a, an old magazine, just rip the pages off as you're going? Yeah, that's what I I've seen a lot of people do. A lot of right. times, um, I, I'll uh, I'll use a paper plate. I like the paper plate. Cause paper plates, but isn't a magazine cheaper? Yeah. Well. Yeah, my magazines are usually free. Right. So the, the kind of like ones. the kind of like the summit racing we got here. Yeah. Are you gonna be taking that with you, dude, or are we gonna, you know, throw it in your box with you so you got a magazine to use? Or no, I'll probably just gonna toss it. Yeah. Hold on there. What's that? A, a, an old tomato can there? Yeah. Buddy? I got this from a, a gentleman named Jim Crawford. James Crawford yeah. gave you that, huh? Yeah, he sure did. Wow. And uh, and I've been kind of uh, that's using been touched, it. That's been touched by James, the late late and great James Crawford, it, Jimmy it, Crawford. It was all clean, but I don't I don't wipe it out like I should. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that's one of the mentos to him. Jimmy Crawford. Now he's a famous pinstriper that was here in Dallas. Him and his dad, James Crawford, and uh, they both passed away from cancer. And uh, we're gonna miss him, but. Yeah, you got to hang out with him once, right? Yeah, I did. Super yeah. cool guy, you know. Gave I knew, me, gave I knew me James and Jimmy personally. They were super close friends, and they used to pinstripe every car that left my shop, dude. Every car. Did you learn anything from Jimmy when you when you met him? What did he teach you, bud? Yeah, he taught me little tricks on how to erase stuff, and uh -huh. that you know it doesn't matter. Well, show everybody what you're talking about. We erase the paint. Well, how do you do that? Well, because I don't think that's ever really been shown. You There's can, a lot of pinstripe yeah. videos out there, but you know it's the little, little tech tip things that really help. What do you got there, bud? Well, you're not supposed to take away any lines, but if you were to, to mess up or step over, you can dip this in mineral spirits. What is it? This is a blending pencil for like graphite drawing with uh -huh. pencil. Okay. And basically, this will absorb the mineral spirits and help you wipe away the little O or the fingerprint, and uh, you know, like that, and then I mean, having a little. Small so you take your uh, uh, graphite pencil. Now, I guess you can't draw with that, can you? No, no. You just you literally just let it soak soak up uh -huh. the mineral spirit. And it sucks that mineral spirit up, and then for fine line 
uh, taking off that fine little mark or whatever, just yeah, you draw just, it you off. Just rub it on there. Huh. And, and a lot of thing. And another thing is like when you wipe off the line, uh -huh. you want to press as firmly as possible, as hard as you can, to 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 wipe it clean off. And you don't want to do it real easy, like if you're using a pencil or something. No, no, you want to take it take right. it all clean off. Now, would you have to clean that tip to reuse it, or does it just yeah, soak you, it up in the? You, you, you would you would want to wipe it off, yeah. or it could still have that color. So that's on a good there. idea, and you use that a lot, huh? Yeah, I really don't. I try not to. Right. But but you if don't I don't use it a lot. Yeah, I try try to avoid it at all costs. Right. Um, you know, and just even do it at just all. Just do a nice job and clean and do it all in one shot. That's that's So that's doing good. pinstriping really requires a positive attitude. M yes. If you definitely. aren't sure with yourself, don't go pinstriping on other people's cars. Yeah, you should probably not pinstripe on other people's cars unless you have years and years of experience. Yeah, well, you only got three, so. Yeah. Which, and I let you pinstripe mine, dude. Yeah, you, you, you called me out and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, on an old promise I gave, there so you go. here I you am. See, that's right, dude. All right, Holden, thanks a lot, buddy, and uh, good luck with your pinstriping. If we get any more rat rods over here, I'll give you a call, okay? Cool, awesome. Thanks, Because you're kind of in the rat rod situation right now. You're Kind of nervous of doing those high-tech $100,000 cars. I don't blame you. Um, we'll stick with rat rods for a while, dude. All right. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Keep up the good Take work, Take it bud. easy. We'll see you later. All right. So that's just one guy that got off his ass out there in the world and is actually doing something with the talent that he's got. This is a little video set that's telling you that if you want to do something in life, you need to get out there and fucking do it. Don't waste your time squabbling about it. Don't think about it like, you know, uh, I'm going to do it tomorrow. Or, or, man, I don't know if I'm good enough to do it. When Holden first showed up at my shop, he was real nervous. He didn't know if he wanted to pinstripe my car or not. But it ended up being a great deal. Uh, I think that the car looks awesome. And he's leaving with a, a, a proud fucking head on his shoulders and probably gave him more confidence to get out there in the world and, you know, maybe uh, search the venture of possibly maybe, you know, making some side money on this instead of, uh, you know, maybe doing it for free for his buddies. So don't be afraid. Don't be shy. Just get out there and get her done. This is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete, looking at my brand new pinstriping and loving what I'm looking at. We'll see you later.